Welcome to Count Stacula on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to another one of my videos. Today's topic, we're talking about high premium collector coins. Are they worth it? Are they a good investment? Let's dive in. All right, so I'm not talking about normal bullion coins like what you see before you, but I'm talking about the really high premium silver collector coins often that they come in a colorized or antique finish and you can tell that the artist or the engraver has put a ton of time and effort into these very artisan like creations and i'm just gonna throw a few pictures up of some of these coins so you know what I'm referring to. Often you'll see interesting themes like uh, dragons and phoenixes or Greek mythology or Roman mythology, all kinds of different, interesting, even modern uh, cyber punk type themes going on with these coins that are actually coins and they do have denominations sometimes. Uh, sometimes they don't, but one thing that they do share in common is typically a low mintage and a very high entry price. So we're talking about usually two, sometimes five ounces of silver. And maybe some really nice high relief. But is it worth what they're asking for on some of these coins? When the price tag is $300 for one of these two ounce coins, that's $150 per ounce of silver that you're paying. Now, I'm not bashing anyone who buys into these types of coins. I agree that they are incredible works of art, but are they good investments? Let's explore. So I think in some cases, although very rare, they can be good investments. Let's look at a couple that have done well in the past. So the Germania Fafnir that came out in 2020 with a limited mintage of 999. This is a antiqued or colorized version with extreme high relief and it's two ounces of silver, comes with a nice display box. I've shared it on the channel previously. And if you had bought this when it first arrived on the market, you would have picked it up for around $350 to $400, which is an incredibly high premium for a two ounce coin. You're talking $200 per ounce, which is insane. However, had you bought that coin and then immediately flipped it on the market, you could have doubled your money because they were going for roughly $700 to $800 very quickly after they had sold out. And while they have maintained some decent valuations since then, they've come down a little bit off the highs, but they still remain a good investment had you purchased on the opening release date. But that isn't always the case, and certainly not with everything. And let's take a look at why. Well, the Fafnir coming from Germania Mint was very highly anticipated. It was the first of a series of Germania Beasts, which we already knew was quite successful because they had sold out pretty much of the bullion version of the coin before they came out with the extra two novelty versions. And so it was pretty much a guarantee that this coin was going to do well because it had a lot of hype surrounding it. And as 
My friend Shadow Stack used to say in his videos, when the hype is ripe, it's time to strike. It's time to sell, strike a deal. And I couldn't agree more because with items like this that have a really high amount of hype surrounding them upon their release, uh, that is actually the best time to flip them, even if you just got the coin. Because hype fades. You know, you can look at Google Trends to observe some of the graphical analysis of Bitcoin, for example. Because I think it represents a perfect example of the hype cycle. And you'll see that at the peaks in 2020 and 2021, people were searching for Bitcoin at its peak. And the last time it was in 2017 when it was when it was peaking. So although after it quickly dies off and along with the price. So hype is definitely something you want to sell into. You definitely don't want to be buying into hype. And I think the same thing goes with the high premium collector coins. And well, unfortunately, we don't really have a whole lot of high premium collector coins on the market that actually have a lot of hype surrounding them. You know, maybe if a uh, YouTuber promotes something, it will potentially pop on the market as more people will know about it. And that could create a, you know, a mini bubble, if you will. I've seen it happen before, but usually I think the majority of the releases that you get, uh, these kinds of artisan coins typically don't have a whole lot of hype surrounding them. They don't have a whole lot of people highly anticipating the release of these coins. And that's why they pretty much mint them to demand. Don't let those mintage numbers, those little mintage numbers fool you into thinking that it's gonna be worth something because it only has a 250 mintage. The fact of the matter is that there's probably only 250 people out there that actually collect those coins and would be interested in buying them, if that. They're really just playing to the market. They're minting to demand, and they know that. But having a low mintage definitely helps with advertising and creating that hype. But you can't assume that just because a coin has a low mintage that it's going to be successful. They definitely do equate to a higher entry cost. You'll see it on bullion dealer websites that they advertise a low mintage and because of that they jack up the price an extra uh, few percentage. It happens all the time even with the bullion coins. If it's got a 5,000 mintage Atmex is not going to be selling that for $30. It's going to be for $42, even if it's day one release. That's just the way it goes. And does mintage really matter? Well, in some cases, yes. But in the past, mintage was more about the numismatic availability of, of a coin. So coins that were minted in... 33 gold, for example, or the early American silver Morgans. There's a difference between the amount minted and what's available today. And so you get uh, a whole bunch of varying prices for even some common day coins that were minted in the millions because not all of them have survived and certainly not all of them have survived in high grades. So a lot of it comes down to organic demand. And organic demand is a term that refers to coins that actually have a continuous base of P2P 
people desiring them and limited availability, limited supply. They're not minting any more of those pre-33 coins. And therefore, the demand that they have is organic. Whereas a coin that was minted yesterday with a low mintage of 5,000 does not represent organic demand. It actually just re represents mass produced scarcity. This is a term that you'll hear if you watch uh, Reserved Investments on YouTube, which I, I recommend checking out if you're interested in, in antiques and collectibles. He offers a really good perspective on that, uh, Sean, over at Reserved Investments. But the mass-produced scarcity is basically just a modern bullion coin that is intentionally minted with low numbers to create an artificial demand. So it's not an organic demand. It's, it's basically artificial. And, but it works. It's actually just a marketing strategy. And I don't recommend buying too heavily into this although it has predominantly taken over the modern bullion marketplace. So in a lot of aspects, it is better to be stacking the numismatic coins of the past than the modern bullion of the present date because they have a better opportunity to rise in, in price than some of the modern stuff. Now, if you're actually a flipper, then you can pretty much take advantage of the modern bullion releases that come out because while many people may expect that, oh, this coin's gonna do well, I better hold on to it for 20 years and see, uh, the reality of it is that the flipper who sells it for 10% more <laughs> or maybe even 50% more than what he got it is going to do far better than the person who holds that modern bullion piece for 20 years and then sells it. Because at that point, a lot of the collector premium is gone. Now, spot price m will probably move up by that time and he'll definitely come out in the positive, but chances are any collectors of that series will have long gone and dropped off since then. They won't be caring that much about older coins. Just think about it. Like, are you seeking the early date kookaburros right now from 25 years ago? Are you seeking the early panda bear coins from China from 40 years ago? Chances are you are not. And they're priced prohibitively because first in that time, they didn't mint to demand. So there were limited supply and uh, there's a lot of fakes out there, let's be honest. So you gotta be careful with spending a lot of money on those types of coins, but putting together an early set of modern bullion coins, I would say is not recommended. Now I've done this, so I'm speaking from experience along with the Rwanda series, but that was something that started in 2008. So it's not even going back that far. Yet the premiums have pretty much skyrocketed on those early date releases. And so, while it's kind of difficult to um, go back and stack early modern bullion coins, uh, it's also not very recommended as a strategy for really attaining wealth. But getting back to the topic of today, are the modern artisan coins worth investing in? I would say absolutely not. They do not represent a good investment and they really are just for the pure collector. They are a piece of art. They are no longer a bullion piece. The fact that it is silver or 
plated gold makes zero difference. It could be made out of wood. It's just a piece of art that you're buying. And the premium um, has nothing to do with the spot price that you're paying for that coin. You've got to keep that in mind. You should only buy one if you absolutely love the design and must have it in your collection. And that's just one piece that you're just gonna treasure and that's fine. But don't expect to get a return when you go to sell it because chances are it's those types of coins that you may end up losing biggest when you do go to sell, especially if you sell to a coin shop. So that is the topic of today. I just wanted to clarify my stance on that. I do have one or two of them. Unfortunately, I can't show them today on the channel, but we will take a look at them in the near future. I just wanted to talk about this topic and see where my viewers stand with those high premium artisan collector coins and thoughts on mintages versus modern bullion and the older numismatic stuff. So that's going to do it for us today, y'all. Thanks for watching. This is Count Stacula. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check the links down below in the description if you're interested in any 3D printed boxes, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.